It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, KT Engelhart. Hello, KT. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm very honored. <laughs> you know, when I first looked at your bio, I thought it said Angel Heart. How many people mistake that? Yeah, a lot of people. Um, and it's funny, I never had to deal with that my whole life or anything. It's, it's my husband's last name. Uh, I have a a bit of a complicated Italian last name, so I stole his. <laughs> and yeah, I'm getting the angel heart um, quite a few times. Oh, well, okay. I see Tortorici on here. Is that your maiden name? Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it's a le- less appealing on a book, I think. <laughs> well, maybe so. I don't know. David Baldacci's done all right with his name. I think that sounds great, actually. <laughs> But uh, Angleheart is a perfectly nice name as well. So anyways, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I saw something on here about passionate advocate for bunnies. Tell me a little about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny start, but I, I love talking about bunnies. So not a problem. Um, well, I, I grew up, uh, I always had bunnies. I had one uh, named Magic, actually. He passed away last year. Uh, he was an ele- 11 and a half years old. And I just got, uh, I rescued two more not long ago. Um, Onyx and Sterling, they're, they're quite a bit bigger. And uh, just as much of, uh, I call them rascals. I mean, like, they're, they're really funny pets. They're, they're kind of all over the place. Um, and, yeah, advocate in the sense that a lot of people aren't aware of how much work is needed to own bunnies. They kind of think it's like having a hamster. And it, it's not the case. You don't really... They need a lot of room. You can't just, like, leave them in the cage. And they need a lot of care. And they eat a lot. And they need vegetables. And it's just that kind of thing where it's a long-term commitment. So I, I just like talking about it because, um, yeah, they're, they're, it's like having a dog, like, in the sense that it is a long-term commitment. How long do they normally live? Oh, my, my dwarf, uh, the dwarves live a, little, live a little longer. So my dwarf lived 11 and a half years old, uh, 11 and a half years. Um, the bigger ones, a little less. They can live more between seven and ten uh, oh, okay. years. So it 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 depends. So yeah, they could they can live quite a long time. I have a sad bunny story. If you want to hear it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. Okay, go for it. All right. Well, <laughs> we got a couple of them. I don't know where my wife got them, but one day she came home with these two little bunnies, and we have a big property that's all walled in so we thought why don't we just let them run around you know don't bother putting them in a cage and let them run and just go wherever they're going to go and we'll throw food out and and we'll keep them and we had them for a while and it's funny because they made like a little bit of a hovel under this sort of arch thing that we have and we thought oh well that's good they made their own little house and you know so we let them sort of be self-sufficient in that regard one day yeah. we we came home and they were gone and we couldn't figure out oh, we we no. looked all around the the property to look for holes like maybe they dug their way out cuz i don't think yeah. that rabbits can climb an 8 foot wall uh that seems no. unlikely and so there was no way that you know something got in or whatever well it turns out one of our neighbors about a week later said you know I saw this giant bird circling around your property. And I thought, oh, my God. So this bird swooped in and took the bunnies, presumably for dinner. It just yeah, it, it amazed me that there was something, you know, that had to be one hell of a big bird to pick the things up and just carry them off like that. Wow. It might have been a, like a falcon or something. Yeah, we were thinking it was an eagle or a giant hawk or something like that. Yeah. A hawk, very possible. Yeah, they're prey, these little guys. They're yeah. they're kind of helpless. <laughs> they are part of the food chain. So needless to say, we didn't get any more. We thought 
no, that's not, you know, we don't want our pets just to suddenly disappear and become something, you know, some predator's dinner. So we thought, no, that's all right. So we we stuck with dogs. At least you gave them. <laughs> at least you gave them a lot of freedom in the short life that they had. They had some space and fresh air. Yeah, we didn't want to keep them in a cage. That just seemed wrong, you know. So it is. Yeah, they need like they have taken over my entire office. By the way, it's no longer my office. Like it's just their room. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> and then they roam around the house sometimes. Well, they're very clean, aren't they? I mean, they don't. They're not dirty animals at all they're not bad like well so they're pretty good for litter they're litter trained like cats like they, they go into their litter they're very like their instincts are really good the thing that's messy is the hay because you've got to have a lot of hay for them like on hand like it's got to be there and that stuff gets everywhere and then, like they mm. do shed yeah so that is the thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay well enough about bunnies let's let's move on to your book <laughs> Uh, you've got a book series out called the Scottish Scrolls book, or just the Scottish I Scrolls? Do. I yeah. do. Okay. And the, the Scottish Scroll is the series. Okay. All right. And the new one is book two, correct? Yeah. Uh, so The Wise One came out in 2020. Uh, it took me um, uh, quite a bit of time to write the second one. The second one is called The Twin Flame, and it is out November 16. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little about the series, generally speaking? And, uh, you know, we don't want to focus in too much on the specific book, but just give us like a overview of the whole series, what it's about, what sort of genre it might be. Yeah, uh, toughest question for authors. We're not good at summing up our work at all, but I will give it a go. So it is a, a young adult urban fantasy um, I would say ages 12 and up. I mean, I've had 12-year-olds love it. I've had 45-year-olds love it. So it's just that kind of um, young at heart type story. Um, it's about a 17-year-old named McKenna who discovers she has abilities. Um, she It takes place in 90s Ireland, 1991. Um, and she goes out there from the States to go find her birth mother when she discovers that uh, that's where her abilities come from. So it's a lot of self-discovery, um, and it is an urban setting. It is all the places I've been to in Ireland in the first book, and then we head over to Scotland in the second book. I've been to Scotland twice. Uh, it's my favorite place in the world. So uh, we've done a lot of folklore in there, and uh, that's part of the magic and lore in the book, too. Um, that pretty much sums it up. Okay. You said she has abilities. Uh, what Magic? Yes, it's a little toned down. Uh, it does get more interesting in the second, but for the in the first one, it's uh, more uh, telekine telekinesis. It's um, uh, being able to, she's an empath, being able to, to feel what others are feeling. So I won't say more than that. Okay. Where did the story come from? Is this, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> is this something you've experienced yourself, but probably <laughs> not with, with the... Uh, magic powers but where where did it come out not. unfortunately not um i'm i'm just really into witchy stories like i grew up watching charmed i grew up reading harry potter so i i just knew i would write something like that someday i'm really intrigued by uh by by uh magic and and the idea that um or like reincarnation is a big theme in this book as well in this whole story so like i'm just intrigued by that and she you know the the, the idea of the of a wise one has uh, I won't say the punchline, but it has to do with uh, reincarnating in a certain way and carrying with you a lot of wisdom. Uh, yeah, again, it's hard to it's hard to explain too much without without uh, giving away um, one of the punchlines. But yeah, it's like a culmination of like my fascination for for magical stories and. And uh, urban settings. I, I love the idea that the setting is something that exists. Uh, I do love high fantasy as well. But because I found Ireland and Scotland such magical places, I thought it was just the perfect setting for my story. Okay. Uh, when the first book came out, did you self-publish it or did you get it picked up by a publisher? No, there. I chose to self-publish. I didn't even, I didn't even look to traditional. Um, I had such a... I had such a, uh, like, I guess, concrete 
I like I wanted it a certain way. I, I could picture my cover. I wanted like kind of full control. It was my first time, so I thought I want to do it myself. Um, and it was also uh, my thesis project. I, I did an MFA in creative writing, and the the reason why I took um, I, I did an MFA is because I wanted to sort of I wanted to publish a book, and I wanted the discipline to do it. It's kind of like okay, I have a mentor, I have deadlines. There's no excuse. I will be able to publish a book. So that's how it started off. So for this series, I will continue to self-publish, and I might look to traditional uh, for the next series or the next book. Uh, I'm open, but I'm really happy with with the way it's turning out, and I, I loved I loved the process, and I'm learning tons, 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 tons. Well, tell me a little about the process because I know there's a lot of authors and wannabe authors out there who are just really put off by the whole process of publishing be it, yeah. you know, sending your manus- uh, manuscripts around, uh, hoping to get somebody that doesn't just throw it in the wastebasket, or trying to dive into the self-publishing, having to do everything yourself. Yeah. How did you find that process of self-publishing? Well, so both are really different in, uh, they're both difficult in different ways. Uh, I know that the whole thing about traditional is you are waiting and waiting and waiting and you're hoping and you're hoping and you're hoping. And that's fine. Like I said, I might I might try it out at, at some point. So self-publishing, you have to do, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to dive into a lot of research to set aside a lot of time that has nothing to do with writing. Um, it is the publishing part of it. So you're you're looking to find uh, the right formatter, the right cover designer, who understands your market, you're advertising as much as you can and marketing as much as you can on social media, you're trying to build your newsletter. So there, there are really a lot of, there are a lot of things. I, I didn't even name half of them, but yeah. And it's, the best thing is to, to ask uh, your community, just like join, join those groups and ask for advice. Um, watch a lot of YouTube videos, watch people that inspire you, that um, that make you feel confident, because you can do this. It's really just a step-by-step thing. Like, you just, just write down the steps, and you can absolutely do it. It just takes time. Well, it's amazing what you can find on YouTube. I mean, you can fix uh-huh. absolutely uh-huh. anything and everything. If you've got a problem, you just go, you know, you just search it on, on YouTube, and there's 50 videos on how to fix your problem. For just about anything. It's really amazing. Exactly. We're in the age of YouTube, 100%. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, If I was to write a book, I don't know which way I would want to go with it. You know, I yeah, haven't, that's uh, fair. haven't given it a lot of thought. I've had all kinds of authors on this show. But uh, for me personally, I don't know. I mean, I've heard the pros and cons on both. But it seems to me that... If you self-publish, you're going to get more of the money. That would, That's true. Royalty-wise, yeah. royalty yes. That would be probably enough for me to want to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're if you're you're up for doing the rest of it, and um, then yeah, in the end, I mean, it, in the end, you're getting more royalties. But the thing is, if you're with the traditional publisher, it it that also depends on which traditional publisher. If you're with the big the big six, the big five, whatever it is, the um anyway, you know which ones I'm talking right. about. They'll do a lot of I think they'll do a lot of marketing for you because they're such big publishers, they've got bigger budgets. But the small to medium sized publishers, they don't have a huge budget. So I don't know what the advances are like. I'm 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 not hearing that it's it's very much, uh, and I do know that you're still doing a lot of your own marketing. So in the end, what is more worth it? Again, I'm not like discounting it at all. Like I said, I will, I will probably do more research after this series, and I might try to shop around um, my next book. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough one. It's really a tough one. You gotta, you gotta weigh all the pros and cons. So, how many books do you anticipate will be in this series? Oh, that's my least favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, just till uh, you decide, yeah. <laughs> there's definitely three. Um, I'm I'm thinking four, but I'm not. Just don't don't hold me to it. Well, I mean, some <laughs> some people have a definite. Okay, there's going to be three in this series, and that's it. And mm-hmm. other people mm-hmm. say uh, the series will go until I run out of ideas. That's possible too. 
I mean, I I'm know. I'm excited to have it. Oh, sorry, we got uh, we got delayed. Th- Go ahead. That's all right. I was just going to say that I know, I know authors that have a two book series, and I know some authors that have a fifteen book series that's still going. So there's no sort of yeah. set amount. Three seems to be no. kind of a I don't know popular number of books in a series because then people can call it a trilogy. Yeah, it has an, a really nice ring to it, a trilogy. Yeah. I guess a four is just, we can say a saga. A saga sounds great, too. <laughs> I think it's all up to personal preference and uh, <laughs> how ambitious you are as a writer. Yeah, I mean, people who write 15 books in a series, wow. I'm just in amazement. I don't think I can, I don't think I have that kind of attention span. <laughs> <laughs> but good for you if you do. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So the book is called The Twin Flame. Has it been released? It, no. So the ebook is on pre-order. Um, the print will be available November 16. Oh, okay. And just, uh, it's oh. so pretty. I just got <laughs> I just got my print proof, and it's so beautiful. Um, it has a stunning red cover on it, and I'm just so happy. My cover designer is is amazing. Well, we're going to wind this down. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, last question: Do you have a website you want to give mm-hmm. out? I absolutely do. It's katieanglehart.com. That's anglehart, not angel heart. And um, you can subscribe to my newsletter. I keep uh, I keep you up to date on uh, giveaways and uh, other things that are going on. And I do not flood your inbox. So go ahead and subscribe. Okay. Well, Katie, thanks so much for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you and nice having you on. Best of luck with the book. I hope uh, it does well. And I hope there's more in the series to come. Oh, there will be. (laughs) Thank you very much for having me. 